Thank you, everyone, for joining. Let's jump into it. Page four. The most important thing that we're working on is eLeap, and I'll go into some detail. Um, that's our next generation uh, OLED technology. We will go into mass production this year in December. Um, it's an extraordinary game changer and an important one. Look, we understand we have been deeply unprofitable for a long time. It's structural. It's based in a lack of competitive advantage. Affects, in fact, the broader display industry where too many people are doing high capital intensity investments with low pro uh, profitability. We've got to do something brand new and different. The firm has spent over 10 years developing this technology. Uh, we do think it's the winner, and it, it, it changes everything. Uh, we go from having a technology set that is not appreciably different from some very good competitors to being far advantaged, and, and that's what we expect to deliver for you this year. Now, EDIP is coming, and we just can't wait for it, meaning we've got to continue to do things to transform the firm and its profitability. So the second thing that we delivered on this year was sales are down, and that was deliberate. We're exiting a highly commoditized, low profitability, and no expectation for it to be profitable. LCD, a smartphone business, and yet we've got to drive higher profitability at the same time. So we've lowered our break-even point by, and we call it relentless, and I think it's relentless. We're just keeping going at this, folks. Um, fixed cost reductions and higher productivity. And the environment continues to be super challenging, and we have to run forward anyway. Uh, so we expect to continue to do more in terms of taking out costs and driving higher productivity in our business, and we'll be EBITDA positive in the second half of this year. A lot of things happened this year. Um, a lot of things driven by us, and a lot of things that kind of, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot of things. Something very, very important happened on, on New Year's Day, which was deeply, unfortunately, that massive earthquake in Ishikawa Prefecture. We have an auto fab in Ishikawa. It's actually super important to the global auto display chi supply chain, given how important we are to global auto displays. I mean, the good news is, um, and this is barely good news because it was such an extraordinary, difficult, and deadly event, we did respond immediately. We fixed everything we need to fix. We ran forward. And so it turned out to have minimal learning impact, but it was a very, very significant event that we had to deal with um, across the firm in January this year. We we'll continue to take out fixed costs and to drive higher earnings. Um, we are bringing to um, production to end at an older, less competitive G4, so fourth generation Totori Fab. This is following after shutting the Higashi Urta Fab, which is G3.5. We're migrating more of our capability to our G6, Mobarata Fab, and our G4.5. Ishikawa Fabs, both of which are, are use a higher end technology called LTPS in the LCD space. And of course, Mobarata is our, is our chief our major OLED fab. We continue to, to, to deliver on what we need in terms of technology development. As I said earlier, this is all about us creating tech that no one else has. And so I mean, there's not, there's not a problem with having capital intensity like a TSMC if you're able to do things that no one else does. And so our goal actually is to take both capital intensity out of the business and, and, to, and to build up a portfolio and set of capabilities that no one else is capable of matching. And so we acquired um, JOLED engineering talent. These are some really world-class OLED engineers. Our future is OLED. We think the world's displays future is OLED also. We continue to focus on sustainability, and we announced new support for TCFD in the last year. The OLED business is profitable. You should think of JDI as two technology sets. One of is very unfortunately, and this is something we have worked on, we need to continue to work on, which is the exit out. And it is an exit of our LC business, which is deeply unprofitable. And the good news, however, is old business, which is the future, is profitable. We're running at 100% fabulization. Customer demand exceeds capacity. We're going, to, we're going to meet that demand with eLeap, which is our next generation OLED, which is even better than what we have today. But the business is profitable and will continue to be profitable. We are progressing discussions to, to increase our elite capacity by, by a lot, by 50x um, in, in China. And we expect to report something on that um, this year. As I just pointed out, the LCD business, however, is unprofitable. And we need to do something about it. And we will get it done. 
So there is an ongoing shift in our activity from LCD to OLED, and I'll talk about it again at some length. That's why I think that's important. It is the case, however, um, that the, uh, our uh, LCD product range will remain relevant, particularly in longer tail segments like autos and industrial for a while. And in that context, there is a tight supply of high-performance LTPS, which is what we excel at. I think there is an opportunity um, to do non-China, non-Taiwan production in this um, product set and to drive higher fabulization and actually drive industry consolidation. We're not alone. This is this business. We've had too many competitors with too much capacity. We are consolidating capacity. Our competitors are doing so also. Finally, we, we appear to be at a point where there could be a structural transformation across the industry. We're also moving ahead, uh, not, uh, as, as you know, we're building um, E-Leap in Japan. As this pointed to, we expect to do that in China. We're also having conversations, multiple conversations, about doing something in, in India also. Here's what happens, uh, has happened across the, the, the year uh, in the various uh, segments. We have two core segments, automotive and, uh, um, sorry, smartwatch and, and, and VR, the, uh, both of which are core. And we have a, a LCD smartphone segment, which is non-core. Uh, automotive is ever so slightly down because we're, we're exiting from unprofitable products. Uh, on the other hand, uh, up big in smartwatch and VR. Uh, OLED is up 74% year on year. VR is also up, driving um, greater than 70, 20% year on year growth. And uh, what's happening in LCD smartphone is, is an exit. And so we're pushing this down hard. This allows us to focus our engineering resources on our next gen tech, which will, will be JDIs. Um, and you should also know that we will re enter smartphones with eLeap. Um, this is a huge market. It has. Um, demands and requirements that EV will address very well, and we expect to re-enter there. So that's what I have on the, uh, on the on broader overview. Hika will talk about the numbers, and we'll come back to more business activity. All right, I'm going to talk about um, the earnings results for the 2023 fiscal year, which was last year, and I'm going to follow on talking about the forecast for the 2024 fiscal year, which is the current year that we're in right now. So we're looking at page 12 right now. Um, these are the results for um, the, the fiscal year last year, the 20, uh, 2023 fiscal year. As you can see, sales uh, was down 12%. Uh, in terms of numbers, we were down about 30 billion yen versus the previous year. Um, however, despite um, the top line you know, coming off, uh, our profit lines, EBITDA and operating profit in particular, have shown significant improvement. This is on the back of what Scott mentioned earlier. You know, we've really taken out a tremendous amount of uh, fixed costs out of our system. Uh, we've boosted um, you know, our, our overall productivity. We've worked hard at lowering our break-even point, and that's really what's allowed us to um, improve on our profit lines despite you know, the, the decline in our top line, um, in our top line sales. Net income is, uh, came in at 44.3 uh, 44 billion yen loss. Um, you know, sort of year on year comparison, that's that's 18 point, uh, that's a, a you know a worsening of about 18.5 billion yen versus the previous year. On a normalized basis, we're actually doing better. If you recall from last year, we re reported two um, significant one-off extraordinary gains last year. One of them was a 15 billion yen uh, you know gain from the forgiveness of debt, and the other one was a 13.5 billion yen gain from the sale of, of a former subsidiary. So, um, you know, if you actually normalize for those two one-off events, we're actually slightly better than we were last year. So that, you know, means all of our profit lines, starting from operating profit down to net income, including EBITDA, are actually better uh, than they were last year. I'm going to be focusing mostly on uh, full year-to-year -year comparisons. So this slide here in 13 actually talks about the standalone fourth quarter and its comparison versus to the standalone quarter, uh, fourth quarter of the previous year. So I'm going to be skipping the quarter on quarter slides and focusing on the year on year comparison slides, which takes us to slide 14. Uh, this breaks down our top line sales into our, our normal categories of core businesses, which is our automotive and smartwatch VR, as well as the uh, non-core businesses, which is our LCD smartphone. As Scott mentioned earlier, um, you know, smartphone, uh, the LCD smartphone business is down as expected as we're working towards exiting that, and the core businesses I mean, overall are up very strong. Core businesses as a whole are up 6% uh, year on year. 
mostly driven this year by smartwatch VR, which saw you know extraordinary growth, especially in OLED. As, as you see there, uh, our OLED business was up 74% year on year, so tremendous top line growth there. And our automotive business was down you know ever so slightly, pretty much only uh, you know on the back of us. Um, exiting specific unprofitable products and lines within our automotive business. Again, I'm going to sl uh, skip slide 15, which is uh, talks about the standalone fourth con uh, quarter comparison versus the previous year, and go to slide 16, which now takes a deeper look at the change in operating profit from um, a year earlier, the 20, uh, 2022 fiscal year, um, into the year that just ended, the 2023 fiscal year. So as you see, uh, we've significantly shrunk our operating loss uh, down from $44.4 billion in fiscal 22 down to $34.1 billion um, in fiscal 23. Uh, you, what you see in front of you is our, the sort of the, the attribution of how uh, we, we achieved that. The biggest um, sort of contributor there was, as you see, fixed costs. We, uh, the closure of the Higashiura Fab, uh, as well as just you know streamlining our production at our flagship Mobara Fab, is really what con contributed to that. You see in the mixed line there how OLED is actually starting starting to contribute um, to our overall profitability as we take down our less profitable LCD smartphone business and also as we exit some of the unprofitable automotive lines you're seeing a greater weighting of the more profitable OLED business coming into play so what you see there in terms of that 2.7 billion positive contribution from mix is really sort of that relative weighting of our of our profitable OLED business coming in there and then finally in the other line that 4.5 billion uplift right there is is a fall off of a fairly significant inventory valuation loss that rep that we reported in the fiscal 22 year, which fell off um, into the fiscal 23 year. Again, uh, this slide here in 17 talks about the standalone quarter co comparisons. I'm going to skip this, which takes us into the forecast now for the current year, the year that ends in uh, March 2025, what we call the fiscal 24 uh, year. This is it. This is a slide 19 shows our forecast for the year. We're looking, if you look at the far right, we're forecasting top line sales of 222 billion yen for the year. That's a, about a 17 billion yen decrease uh, versus last year. If you take a deeper look at the, sort of the segment breakdown of that top line sales, you'll see that we continue to shrink our LCD smartphone business. That's the single largest contributor of the fall in sales, and that's only to be expected as we continue to shrink and eventually exit over the medium to long term the LCD smartphone business. Automotive is effectively flat. Um, we're get, uh, taking care of a few remaining lines um, of unprofitable products and, uh, and businesses. So as we shrink that, uh, you see uh, automotive coming in flat. And most importantly, you know, our core you know, growth business, uh, you know, the smartwatch and VR uh, continues to grow strongly, uh, you know, following, following on from the strong growth that we had last year. I think importantly here is the fact that, you know, we're forecasting 11, an 11.7 billion yen um, loss for the EBITDA line for the for the EBITDA line for the entire year, but if you take a look at the breakdown between the first half and the second half, we're actually forecasting for EBITDA to turn positive in the second half. So that's a, a significant achievement uh, that we're expecting in the second half of this year. Otherwise, we're looking at operating profit improving um, to uh, to 18.2 billion uh, yen loss and net income improving to a 26.6 billion yen loss. Once again, we're achieving um, these significant improvements in our profit lines despite an ongoing reduction in the top line. So what you know it really sort of shows that we're we're really making very lean our, our business structure. We're taking out a lot of costs, we're streamlining our operations so that you know we're able to deliver improvements in profitability despite declining top line sales. And as we continue to you know expand the business, new businesses like Eleap come into play and the top line turns to growth, then you know we're gonna get significant operating leverage um, in our profit lines in the future. Uh, the final slide here is slide, uh, slide 20, 
this talks to the uh, attribution of how we're going to be improving our operating profit line from the 34.1 billion loss last year to our 18.2 billion forecast this year. And as you see, the single largest contribution is that mixed line right there. It's, it calls for an 11.2 billion uplift. The uh, primary drivers of that continues to be OLED. So as we take down, as we continue to take down our LCD smartphone weighting and a little bit of our unprofitable automotive lines, and we continue to grow the OLED, it's just that relative weighting of the more profitable OLED business kicking in in the mix there. The other thing you see there is, you know, as a follow-on from last year, we're expecting uh, to deliver some licensing income from our eLeap and HMO businesses in the second half. So that's uh, the, the single largest contributor uh, in terms of the uplift. And then also what you see on the other line is that we continue, uh, we will continue to see a little bit of fall off of some inventory valuation losses versus last year, but we're also going to take, you know, affect much tighter inventory control. Um, and we're going to streamline our operations. That's going to be another big part of how we improve um, operating profit uh, for this year. I guess, I'm sorry, this is the last slide here, 21. Um, this shows the progression of operating profit from the first half of this year into the second half of this year. So it really shows how on an accelerated path, we're going to be really strengthening um, our, our profitability in the second half of this year. And this is really what's going to be a key driver of how we get EBITDA to turn positive in the second half. As you see there, it's predominantly volume um, and our uh, eLeap and HMO uh, licensing uh, income. Volume, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be you know largely driven by partly from our continued growth in OLED, but also, as Scott mentioned earlier, there is a unique opportunity out there for high-performance LTS panel shipments. You know, there's a shortage in the market, yet demand is very strong. Uh, we've got capacity. This is a great way for us to fill, you know, completely fill our fabs. So we're going to try to go after that business, and if we can get it, you know, we're going to see some positive contribution in that volume column right, column right there, in addition to the licensing income that we expect from ULEAP and HMO. So that's really what's going to drive that accelerated, you know, improvement in the second half and get us to uh, EBIT uh, positivity in the second half. That's all I have for our earnings. Thank you very much. Two other sections in the presentation, um, the business and the Meta Growth 2026 update and the ELEAP launch. Um, I'm actually going to jump through this one. Um, look, this, this is a lot of material here. <laughs> you could skip the, some, some, some slides also. We, we do believe we should provide more information than less. Um, we have it. Uh, it's our job not only to deliver results, but be transparent about how we're thinking about where those results are coming from, how we're thinking about the firm and the upside and the opportunity and technology and so so we try to give you more information rather than less but we, at the same time we don't we, we, we're not intending to make this a three-hour presentation so there is information deeply relevant to the firm we, we spend a lot of time creating it uh, we would we would be we would be delighted if you would read it uh, but I'm going to jump to uh, and make a decision as to, to what is most fundamentally important to, to discuss with you today and that's elite um, it is truly transformational for the firm, and, and we think transformational for the global display industry, which, which means for billions of consumers. So let me go slide by slide here, because this is so critical. So this is what ELIP stands for, environment positive, logography with massless de deposition, extreme long life, low power, high luminance, and any shape patterning. So that's what ELIP is. And here is kind of a key tenet of how we're running the firm. We do think OLED is the winning display technology. And so we'll talk about that, why. It's, 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 it's better. Um, it's the best tech out there. It's got the best uh, price performance. We believe it's going to be, become the overwhelming, uh, overwhelming display market leader. And we think within OLED, ELEAP is the winning OLED technology. So to start to that, and look, this is not just us. I mean, we don't believe in, you know, we serve customers in the world. We don't believe in, 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 in taking a, a, a view and, and, and plunging forward on it. This is, of course, deeply um, linked into the performance characteristics of the technology and its ability to respond to customers' needs. And so the plain fact of the matter is that OLED is better than LCDs. Um, you know, it is the, the, the biggest difference is that LCDs require backlighting. Um, and so with, with, with OLED, it's organic. Literally, it, it is organic. There, you have self-illuminated pixels. It means you have, you can make your, your, your OLED displays ultra-thin, lightweight, low power. 
You have perfect blacks, no graying from the black light. You have beautiful colors. They're natural, they're organic. It turns out actually uh, LCD colors are not. Ultra-wide viewing angles, superb video performance. All it is much faster than LCD. LCD is by definition uh, rigid. It cannot be bent and, uh, and, I mean, you can do a little bit of curvature. It's not flexible and customizable. So all it is fantastic. Um, it, it truly is, and that's why the world is cutting over to it. We, 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 we put two, three customer segments on the page, all of them big, smartphones, automotive, notebook PCs. It's not only these segments that the shift is happening from LCD to OLED. I told you we're gonna, I'm going to talk about every page, but I'm not going to make this a three-hour presentation, so we'll move forward. But OLED is, is winning. It's worth raising the question if it's winning now against LCD, whether or not there are the competitive alternative technologies, and we believe actually that OLED will dominate these also. So, you know, micro LED, micro OLED, uh, micro OLED sometimes is called OLED OS, OLED on silicon, so the difference between OLED, uh, which, is, which is done on glass substrates, and micro OLED, which is done on silicon. Um, you know, silicon is small and very expensive, um, but the key difference is, is which substrate you're using. And OLED is on glass, as I said, and micro OLED is on, is on silicon. We think OLED dominates both these techs. There are just too many unresolved technical issues, production yield challenges, you know, and high costs. Um, major um, reports of a, a, a major cancellation in the micro LED space uh, in the last couple of months as, as you know, customers uh, begin to understand that the future is, in fact, OLED. Um, in a good way, OLED is a mature tech, meaning it's got it's got a super robust ecosystem. It's got economies of scale, very sophisticated set of capabilities in it. it it's, it's, it's the winning tech. Um, and, it is, and, has, and so, you know, the challenge is with micro LED and micro OLED are, are, are specific to both technologies. But, you know, what, we're, what we're, we're saying here is that we are seeing in our customer product roadmaps also that OLED is going to, is going to win. And so you need to have a play in OLED in order to serve the world. You know, I think we get the impression that people think OLED is really kind of out there, um, and, and it is because you know uh, uh, half of smartphones are using OLED, and, and all the time, and um, uh, smartphones are. Um, and there's been, and, and by the way, that penetration in the smartphone market is going year after year. But one should not be misled by half, uh, fifty percent market share in smartphones. OLED is almost nowhere right now in autos and, and, and notebook PCs, and it's getting specced in. So there's a massive growth upside in this market as OLED takes over. And that's why uh, eLeap's important. It's important to us and it's important to the world. It is the case that OLED does have some inherent issues. One of them is short lifetime, and the other one's high production costs. And eLeap uh, allows you to solve for both. And so it's, it's, a, it's a deeply advantaged form of OLED. Uh, it's an evolved form of OLED, if you want to put it that way. It powerfully moves a look forward. I would want to spend a lot of time on this slide, but I guess I won't. Um, you know, the thing you should know is that what is interesting about eLeap from a production um, perspective is that we don't use fi so called fundamental masks. We don't use masks. And the result of that is you have these huge masks in conventional OLED with very poor precision. And so you have to have, you can't really move the mass around that well. And so you have to have big kind of, if you look at the page, you see all this black space in conventional OLED because you can't put the pixels together because there's not enough precision in moving around these big metal mass. And so in order to avoid R and G and B being on top of each other, you have to space out the pixels. What that means is you get much less brightness area. Um, by the way, we don't talk about this as much, but it also means that you can pack not only more brightness into uh, into Elite because we substitute for mass photolithography, so we're using the semiconductor process so we can pack the pixels together without worrying about them being on top of each other. It also means you can get much higher resolution out of Elite, and so there is obviously a broad customer set. I mean, customers like high resolution and, and beauty, and also particularly in the VR space, we use these big um, lenses in order to kind of make very small screens seem big. They, they cut the users understood or experienced resolution by a lot. So high resolution is something very, very important. And we think eLeap is able to, to deliver super high resolution VR um, over time. That will be important. At any rate, so you, you get super high brightness. You get long lifetime because 
The problem with conventional OLED is you have all this black space, so you're pushing a ton of current through kind of a, 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 a primarily black display, and it burns up the pixels. And so by going to eLeap, you don't have the pixel burnout, and so you get lifetime, and it's nonlinear. You get actually three times the lifetime. You get lower cost of eLeap. On the average, we think roughly 30% lower cost. It's primarily it's linked to not having fine metal mass and all their costs. It's not you don't have uh, fine metal mass related production downtime as you're replacing and cleaning and maintaining the fine metal mass. You get higher fabulization. So it is you know the good news is and this is why the technology is going to win. It's not only better, it's less expensive. It also uh, because you're not moving these massive metal mass around. Um, uh, and much less energy consumptive, so in other words, a much more energy efficient uh, production process. That means you, 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 you actually have 50% less CO2 emissions during your production process. For a 14-inch notebook, um, the, the amount of CO2 emissions goes down to something on the order of 14 kilograms, 30 plus pounds per notebook. So this is non-trivial. If you want to create a world um, and look, we, 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 we take the, we take the, uh, the view, we, we, hope, we hope you join us as that climate change is real and that we should do something about that, that eLeap is a powerfully green tech that can help solve a major uh, planetary problem. The development is going very fast. We started with 1.4 inch, first customer samples um, in SEP of 2022. We increased the display by 58x um, uh, in, in, by mid last year. We're now driving kind of into higher, um, much higher uh, sample sizes, and we'll, we'll talk, we'll have, we'll have some announcement uh, about that um, this year. Uh, we're also driving much higher functionality out of it. We're now, for example, doing 1600 nits with a single stack, meaning you know, there's a way to try to get higher brightness um, by doubling up um, your, uh, your OLED with this so-called tandem structure. It makes the, both the product and the manufacturing pro process more complex and, and, and makes it more expensive. So you want to have a fantastically extraordinary performance uh, display at, at, at a price point that is truly mass and affordable. Uh, eLeap is, 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 is the solution. And so this is the year of eLeap. I mean, it's, it's been a long time coming. We have worked on this technology for over 10 years. It's accelerated over the last couple of years. Uh, our current production yield is over 60%. Um, that is actually very good. Uh, we're not, <laughs> the, the, there, are, there, are, there are companies out there that are shipping conventional OLED with only kind of yields of 20 to 30%. They're, by the way, they're they are profoundly loss, a loss creating. We do, but we are already at 60%. We're going to go to production launch uh, in December of this year. We actually, uh, it, it, our goal is to get above 90% yield at, uh, by that time. It, we think it's, it's, it's very viable. But this is a technology that we're, we, you know, we're driving forward very, very fast on and we think is, is truly a game changer for the global display industry. I wish to say, you know, um, our sense is there have been two um, display revolutions. One was kind of uh, the cathode ray, ray tube, which was fantastic, right? I mean, you could actually have moving pictures um, in your home. Um, but uh, if you're of my age, you can remember kind of like having a house party and having kind of you know, like five of your neighbors over to move your 120-pound you know, or 200-pound TV. Um, so the second revolution was LCDs, which took you to compact, energy-efficient, you know, high-resolution screens that you can move around um, without having five people help you do it. OLED is, you know, dramatically progresses um, uh, uh, the display technology, but we don't think it's complete. You need kind of lower costs and longer lifetimes, and OLED is, uh, via, via Leap is going uh, to achieve that. So, you know, our strategic in, uh, direction is um, we have taken, you know, it's, a, it's an operating hypothesis of the firm that OLED is going to win, and you need to win an OLED. And, and so, you know, that is a key element of any investment you make with JDI as to your view on what you think the future is OLED and the TAM is for OLED and the TAM is for, for eLeap, you know, within OLED. But we think OLED's the winner. We think eLeap's the winner. And there's an opportunity to deliver extraordinary customer value that we have not delivered because we didn't have this technology. So this is going to be zero one. We turn on the switch. We begin shipping uh, eLeap and we're going to do it uh, hopefully in size. In that sense, in the work we're continuing to do in China, um, in cooperation with government in Wuhu to, 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 to reach an agreement um, is super important 
um, the 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 uh, announcement um, it, it would increase our uh, production if we get this done production capacity over 50x. You know, this technology is very relevant as a massive TAM. We need more of it rather than less of it. So this is a very important element of extending uh, G JDI and EDIP's reach to kind of the world. Not only China, uh, we also have ongoing discussions um, in India. Um, we think that the, these are both deeply relevant, uh, massive and growing markets for our staff presence, and they will be and they will be an EDIP presence. So that is um, today's. Um, uh, completes today's presentation, skipped over a fair amount, happy to take any questions. Um, but again, uh, you know, something very, very important is coming out to you this year. And uh, we, we look forward to delivering, you, delivering the goods for you. Happy to take any, any questions or, uh, or, or comments. If you have a question, please click the hand raise icon. It looks like there are no questions, uh, so we will end today's briefing. I would like to express our sincere appreciation for your participation. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone. We went forward. Take care.